Hi everybody and welcome to the TensorFlow Developer Summit. I'm Lawrence Moroni reporting from the TensorFlow Cafe and it's my pleasure to have Megan Cacholia with me in this episode. Now Megan, great keynote Thank that you, you gave. There was lots of great information on there. And we had Jeff on the show a few minutes ago and he was talking about like some of the great stuff that's been done with TensorFlow and you shared some great examples. Could, could you tell us about them? Yeah, well actually there was one example I really liked in Anita's section as okay. well. Uh, so kind of right at the beginning, there was the example about the planet discovery. Um, oh, yeah. And the reason I really like this one is because it was someone in my team. And it really was one of these things where someone came and it was, they were like, I have this idea, this data is publicly available, can we try this? I'm not sure if it's going to work, but I'm excited about it. I'm like, well, okay, sure, 20% project, why not? <laughs> and then people are like, oh, how is it, what's it like being in Brain and on TensorFlow? I'm like, oh, one of my Swedes discovered planets, right? <laughs> it's, exactly. it's pretty cool. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what did you do for your 20% exactly. project? Oh, I, found, I found a new planet. I found a new planet. <laughs> um, so I think that's really amazing just because uh, when you take a step back and think about it, this is a person who has very strong software engineering skills. He's good at machine learning. He knows it, but right. he's not an astrophysicist. Yep. He's never discovered, like, done stuff with NASA or anything yeah. before. It was just the data was there. He was excited about trying it, and we found a way to make it work. Um, I thought that was really, that, to me, that's just a really cool example of like, oh, wow, like, there are these problems that before were like, well, we could have a human sift through all of this and maybe figure some things out. Right. We can actually find things out better by using machine learning, and then everyone's really excited about what we've found. So yeah. I, I really like that one. That one's one of my favorites. That, that one is super, <laughs> and also, isn't it that, that it's not just discovering the planet, but it's also a solar system that has multiple planets. Yeah. So being able to get to the resolution of saying, hey, it's not just we know there's a planet around this star 30 yes. light years away. There are eight of them. There are eight of them. You know, and it's yes. like, I, I think it's 30 light years anyway. But it, it, that just blows my mind, because it's not that long ago, like he said, it was only the top astrophysicists and astronomers who might be able to measure wobble in a star and say, I think there's a planet there. Now with machine learned data, we can have somebody go, nope, there's eight of them. Exactly. You know, which exactly. is just super cool. It's really cool. cool. <laughs> yeah. And you, you shared some examples in your keynote that I really like, like protecting the rainforests and uh, air traffic control, right? Yep. So uh, what, what, have you been involved in any of them or as your team? Not directly in any of those examples, I don't think. I do have a few folks who have worked on some of the medical examples that Anita talked about and then Jeff kind of talked more right. about as well. Uh, I think those are really exciting just because it's a way of augmenting doctors and helping them, right? You can give them more tools, you can give them more information, you can give them more data. It's not that you can replace doctors, but you can give them more help so that they can do their job better and actually help more people, especially in places where there just aren't enough doctors or aren't enough folks who have the right kind of training. Right. Um, I think that's really exciting just to see the certain things like the, the retina scans, oh, right? Or it's incredible. Um, the different, all the, all the other stuff they're doing in ophthalmology. Uh, I've had a couple of folks who've worked on some of those projects as well, but I always find those really exciting because it's applying machine learning to a problem we already know about, but the results are so amazing just that you can make things better for people. Jeff and I were joking, it's, uh, but it's true. It's like it's computer vision helping real vision. Yes. Right? <laughs> you know, so it's like, yep, it's really, that's, so. that's the perfect application of technology. <laughs> yes. you know? I, mean, I really like the air traffic control example because, you know, I used to live really right beside the main air traffic control center for New York. And it was like the one thing that I learned is how stressful a job it is. Oh, I can imagine. Uh, yeah. And so to and, and to think how we quickly people burn out doing that job, but then having something to at least assist them. Obviously, you can't replace them, but to at least assist them in that job because prediction and projection. I mean, it's that's what they have to do in split second. And that's correct. That's correct. And the more that, data so. or the more information they can have at their hands, or the faster they can get it yeah. at their yeah. fingertips the better off they'll be in making the right choices and helping direct everything correctly. It, yeah. it takes a special gift to do that job, so anything we can do to help them and keep exactly. us safer while we're in the air. Exactly, I just, it's better know, for so everyone. That, that just, <laughs> just, just really blew my mind. So now, of course, all of this is made possible by TensorFlow, and you're part of the engineering team for TensorFlow, so yes. how, does, how does it feel to, to be building all this or to be helping to build all this? Um, it's really exciting. I mean, think, I think sometimes with, it's just like with any job, you might get uh, lost in the day to day a bit, right? We have teams to run, we have to make sure we're building the right things. Um, but I think the most exciting thing is when we get to take a step back and be like, what's the community trying to do? Right. right? What types of things are they trying to build? How do we help go in some of those different directions? Whether it's just make it easier for more people to use things because now the APIs are simpler or those higher level APIs like Keras or whether it's like, oh, okay, we know there's really some experts out there who want to just fine tune and hand tune everything, give them the capability to do that and tell them how to do it for really powerful hardware. Um, so I think it's, it's one of those um, groups 
especially at Google, you don't see as many where they get to have this external community interaction. I find that to be the most interesting thing because people externally are watching what we're doing. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's not just that we're held accountable to, you know, to the team or to the group. We're held accountable to all of the folks who are using TensorFlow as well and who want to use it for different applications. Uh, so I find that actually one of the most exciting things about TensorFlow as a like as a project yeah, is that yeah. it's not just about like oh we're doing something inside for Google no no we're really looking at like what does it mean for the community how are we helping all the different groups how are we enabling research how are we enabling production um, so I, I find that the most the most fun part and the, pe the people are awesome as well yeah. and um, I mean there are people out there with world beating ideas and no way to implement them right yeah. and it's a part of what we're trying to do is to democratize AI so yes. that they can go out there and they can implement them. Because we can't think of everything. We'd yes, like that's to, correct. but we can't. That's right. But we're enabling and helping <laughs> as yeah. much as possible. It's yes. actually really cool. There's a board just outside the cafe where people have been writing their ideas, their ideas. of what they'd like to yeah. do at TensorFlow. Go check it out. It's really, yeah, really cool. Yeah, I will. I think we did this at the last Dove Summit as well. And it's always really like overwhelming in a sense to look and see. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so many ideas or so many things people have already done as well. It's, it's so impressive. Some of them are super inspiring and some of them are hilarious. <laughs> yes, you know? well, my favorite the, is I saw some, somebody wants to build a jazz musician. <laughs> <laughs> they, <laughs> should, they should talk to Magenta. To Magenta, exactly. <laughs> you, know. you never know. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. We might have the next Miles Davis as, a, as an AI. <laughs> so, so thank you so much, Megan. It's been a real pleasure yeah, chatting with you. Yeah, thank you. you. So, and thanks everybody for watching. I'm Lawrence Moroni, and if you have any questions for me or if you have any questions for Megan, please leave them in the comments below and we'll be sure to answer them. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you. Bye.